Hey there, this is Ari. Welcome back to the Energy Blueprint Podcast. With me today is Dr. Madia Saeed, who is going to be talking all about the links between inflammation and chronic disease. Enjoy. I will hand it off to you and let you jump into it. Oh my gosh. Thank you so much for an honor for this time together. Um, this is going to be fun and supercharged, right? So we're ready for this. Yay! This is like, I have to tell you, yes, I'm super passionate about this topic because I have been there. You know, I was sick and tired of being sick and tired. And I literally, yes, I'm a family physician, but I was also had severe lupus, Hashimoto's, digestive issues, acne, eczema, joint pain, um, weight issues, shingles. Are you just reading an alphabetical list of diseases? No, seriously. I really, and all of them sort of came to a peak in residency. So here, I'm a family physician, my brother's an interventional cardiologist, my sister's a pediatric physician, I have a sugar daddy who's also a physician. So all of us are doctors, but here I'm with joint pain and chronic fatigue to the point where I felt like I couldn't even lift a finger. And that's where I went to doctor to doctor, despite being a physician, I went to doctor to doctor to doctor to see like, what can I do? And I was also diagnosed, you know, chronic fatigue syndrome, that like, that diagnosis that just basically means we have no idea. Yeah. Um, so I was diagnosed with chronic fatigue syndrome with all of those things. Um, and then later on, it was the lupus. But it was just, I felt like I was stuck. And no matter where I went and who I spoke to, they were like, sorry, really? There's nothing we can do about this? You know, so, you know, like just, you know, maybe just, maybe you're just stressed. And yes, I was stressed at this time. I was a new mom, a new wife, a new resident, all at the same time. <laughs> Me and my husband were both working 80 hour work week. But I'm like, okay, so then what can I do to fix that? They're like, oh, we don't really know that either. You know, like, so here as physicians in residency of a family medicine in a residency, we were, we had no idea what, how to deal with chronic stress. We had no idea how to deal with chronic fatigue <laughs> or even all of these other you know, symptoms that I was dealing with. And oh, here's a pill for this and here's a pill for that. But I would, was not there because I'm like, every quarter I turn, I feel like there was another chronic condition. So I'm like, there has to be something that I can do to stop this. And um, what is so crazy is that now that our hindsight, I looked at, you know, our entire world right now, we are living in the negative. You know, because Negativity runs our lives. Negativity runs the economy because they're not going to want me to buy the next iPhone until I get, you know, until they tell me all the terrible things that are wrong with the one that I already have, you know? <laughs> and so that's where, that's the only way that our cycles, our hamster wheel continues to go is just by being negative and giving somebody sort of no hope. Like the only hope you have is in these medications. I mean, my cousin has metastatic breast cancer. And all we were really, to, she all was told, and she was actually at an integrative cancer center. And they were like, really? Yes, these, here, you could do these lifestyle things, but yeah, but if your basic biggest thing is in these medications. So again, trying to force people to you know, only do this type of approach. But this is where I realized when I started looking at it that we're not alone. Six out of every 10 adults have a chronic health condition. Three fourths of all the population will die of a <laughs> lifestyle related condition. 11 million people will die of a bad diet. Um, and then it just, our kids are getting sicker. You know, one out of every six uh, American children is left with, you know, either has a neurodevelopmental problem like autism, ADHD, dyslexia, specific like learning disorders or others is sensory processing disorders. And if we continue at the current trajectory, one out of every four children will have autism by 2033. So there's something going on here <laughs> that, that we, as, as a doctor, I'm sitting there like, okay, what are we going to do? Oh, here's a medication. Okay, we don't really have medication for autism. So we just sort of shove it under the carpet until they, like what we're doing right now with like, you know, COVID-19. Yeah. Like, no I think the answer to, to all these issues has just got to be more drugs. Yes. Oh, seriously. That is literally, and I was like, no, we're not going to go there because those medications and those you know, side effects, 
not happening. But, but unfortunately, I mean, even just the frame you're talking about to hear an MD speaking from this frame is a rare thing because absolutely it's not the frame that you're taught in medical school. Um, you're, you're coming from a frame of this criteria means a diagnosis of this condition means deliver this drug absolutely. This surgery, not absolutely what, not, not to see those, those symptoms and say, well, what are the root causes of those symptoms and how Absolutely. can we address those root causes at the environmental level, the lifestyle level, the nutrition level? Absolutely. And we're not looking at those root causes because we were never taught a single class of nutrition. We were not, unless I missed it during maternity leave. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. But the thing is, or we were never taught a single class of stress management. We were just taught in one patient. So my husband slash her sugar daddy, right? So he has to see 110 patients a week for our paycheck not to go half. Mm. And we are never taught to address those underlying root cause. We were just taught in one uh, visit, in a 15 to 10 minute visit, 10 to 15 minute visit, you're going to address one symptom and one symptom only. And I was literally slapped on the wrist when I spent a little bit more time with the patient. Mm. So, because they want us to keep us on this hamster wheel. Why? Because of the fact that we don't get paid for how many patients we heal. We get paid for how many patients we see. Mm -hmm. And my husband has to see 110 patients because that's where his RVU stand. And then you only get paid according to the RVUs that you make. And that's how many patients you see and the complexity. So it's a crazy world. But then because of the lack of insight into these chronic diseases on our eyes, it's affecting our world is suffering, and it's not even just affecting us. And then I'm, I, when I looked at this, I'm like, oh my gosh. But I'm looking at what science is now doing to our bodies, what science is doing to our world. I'm like, what will happen to humanity if we continue living this way? <laughs> because it's not where, I mean, like, look, I mean, yes, right now we have one virus, but next time we're gonna have another because we are just getting weaker and weaker from the inside out, and not even just us, our planet. And so either we're stuck with no hope, which, you know, conventional medicine is great for acute medicine, acute care. But when it comes to, uh, uh, you know, chronic care, it's missing the boat. So we ha that's where we have to start to introduce integrative, holistic, functional medicine into that picture. Because with all of those combinations, healing is possible. And um, to, you know, really, because that in and of itself gives us hope. And I've had, I've done this with so many patients. I have a two 70 year olds and actually these people on United Nations with two 70 year olds that had chronic pain and fatigue and was, a, was basically using a walker the entire time. And just by getting to the underlying root cause, now they're off of all these medications. Um, same with rheumatoid arthritis, you know, autoimmunities. I had this one patient with pediatrics would be a polaris, severe chronic pain, severe chronic fatigue. Um, again, just by getting to the root cause, <laughs> it improved, you know, eczema, depression, you know, all of these symptoms to the point where, again, digestive complaints, ADHD, anger, all improving. And no matter what, you know, because we're, as functional medicine practitioners, we're sort of the, the phys practitioner of last resort. <laughs> So and that's fun for me because the fact that then they're really dedicated to, you know, fix this problem. And really they've tried all these other approaches that have missed the root cause. And so that is what we really got to figure out. So what is, what is integrative fun functional medicine? What is holistic medicine? Is basically all the same that instead of looking at all of these conditions as, you know, you know, separate entities, we look at it as a whole approach. And getting to the root cause, and that usually is the inflammatory response that causes these symptoms, but then to figure out what is causing that inflammatory response. And, um, and what's cool is that once you heal one symptom, once, once you lower the overall inflammation, you optimize your mitochondria to work so much better. And that in and of itself will help to heal and improve not just one symptom, but then all of them simultaneously. So then what is inflammation, right? We're going to talk about, okay, let's figure this out first. Yes, we've been, we, and then we'll go, go into like the mitochondrial aspect of it. But inflammation really actually means is fire inside. It's something that we're all familiar with. It's a fierce life-saving reaction that occurs when your body's immune system tries to fight off infection, heal injuries, or protect you from disease. 
And there's two main types. So there's acute inflammation and that lasts for a short time. Everything looks good. Yeah, it serves a healthy purpose. Yay, all good. But then too much of a bad, good thing. <laughs> it cannot be so great. And that is your systemic inflammation gradually destroys this beautiful masterpiece that we were born with. It's a hidden smoldering fire created by your body's immune system as it tries to fight off, you know, life's daily exposures <laughs> to unhealthy food, the stresses, toxins, allergens, you know, overgrowth of bad bacteria or bugs, and even low grade infections. So these triggers, you know, when everything is con controlled, everything looks great. You know, everything's working good. And cytokines are an important part of fighting this inf infection and cancers. And it's really important for determining friend versus foe. So when properly functioning, everything remains contained and great good to go. But with overexposure of these triggers, it goes into overdrives, destroying everything in its path, including the mitochondria. Because the mitochondria now, you know, is like, the energy source for ourselves. And that one is, you know, it's like this powerhouse and these little factories that hold hundreds uh, to thousands, you know, in each cell of the mitochondria. And what happens is that these take the food that we eat and convert them to energy, which is known as ATP. And this energy is then used to support our everyday bodily functions. And healthy mitochondria are super important for overall health and well-being. But the mitochondria are really, you know, the, they are able to perceive signals of inflammation that then initiates danger by activating and managing the innate immune system. So the mitochondria can easily be damaged through uncontrolled oxidative stress that can then degrade the protein, the membranes of the DNA of the mitochondria. So when the mitochondria aren't functioning properly, our metabolism decreases, leads to obesity, and as inflammation interferes with the job of the mitochondria to even burn fat and even makes fat loss really difficult. So basically it can affect every part of your body and this overall inflammation that can then lead to autoimmunities and cancer. And because remember that uh, the mitochondria also end up when they start, when they make the ATP, they're also producing a byproduct you know, like reactive oxygen species, like a form, a type of free radical. And um, so normally what should, what should be happening <laughs> is that it's able to control it because a little bit of that is, is okay. But um, besides for like the natural, natural processes, that's able to, your body's still able to function. But now when you add in like smoking and extra inflammation and all of these other things, that can lead to a decreased function in the mitochondria, leading to more oxidative stress that can cause more problems. So um, I hope that I didn't confuse anybody there. <laughs> because it's so super important. So at least what we can try to do, yes, see, we're all going to age, right? Because that's, you know, can decrease some of the mitochondrial function. But at least the other pieces that we can control, like the inflammation that we're dealing with on a daily basis, or the chronic inflammation, all the triggers, like you know stress and lack of sleep and environmental pollutions and blood sugar imbalances all of those that we can control so getting to chronic inflammation um remember what's really super pow powerful is people are like oh my gosh you know what's going on here like i can't i feel like i'm so tired i can't make the right decisions i i'm just like going for that chocolate oreo <laughs> instead of the thing but this is where really educating the person to know that you know every one little step to everything that we're going to talk about now each step that we take will actually there's two main pieces in decision making and that's the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex and you need both of them to work appropriately to make a good decision so everything that we're going to talk about will one help your decision making and will help your mitochondria so therefore will actually help you in the right direction and so all of these so i call it the foundations of good health which is your digestive health and detoxification and the four S's, stress, sleep, social, and spiritual health. And all of these um, can actually weaken the mitochondria and also can you know, weaken the connection between the amygdala and the prefrontal cortex. So if we just start with just one of these a day even, <laughs> it can really collaboratively really make a powerful impact on how you feel today. So I know because I know this is overwhelming. So I want to go through these steps things one by one and empower you with that this can all be easy 
time, cost effective, and can be, you don't need anything. You can just start with whatever you have in your house today. So how are we gonna extinguish those flames, right? Because we know that we have this inflammatory response that is you know, causing havoc. So how are we going to extinguish that by finding the root cause? And somebody's, everybody's root cause is completely different. So let's go, so when I go through these, you wanna look into yourself and say, okay, where am I deficient? in these different pieces. And specifically, I like to start off all of my patients. And I think this is where I was a little bit different than all the other doctors. <laughs> because spirituality, we do not want to touch with a 10 foot pole. In a resident, and I'm like, no, 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 that's like taboo. Like you're saying what? You know, but it is really important because we're mind, body, soul, right? And so that grat and the negativity that we were given um, we know that there's spiritual health in and of itself can improve your blood circulation, improve digestion, to help you detoxify, improve the immune system, improve sleep and pain that overall then helps everything else in every cell of your body. But there is gratitude in and of itself, right? Gratitude and meditation and all these things we have, our 90% of our subconscious is governed by our, sorry, uh, by like 10%, our thoughts and actions are governed by 90% of our, you know, 90%, which is our subconscious. And our sub, if our subconscious, specifically with the media or like the, everything, what we're seeing now specifically, right, with all of the havoc, I mean, you turn the news on, it's like havoc, havoc, havoc. But all of these pieces are leading to a subconscious that's negative, that we need to change it to being more positive. Because they've done studies where when you're frustrated in life, your heart rate variability is all over the place. But when you live a life of appreciation, your heart rate variability is a nice sine wave. So it's super powerful. And, and I felt like I've been doing this with every single patient over I've seen over the last 13 years. Almost every patient. And I have them start off with gratitude. Because they have done studies after studies and after studies with how beneficial gratitude is and optimism, how it can lead to optimism. So immediately when you wake up in the morning, say 10 things that you're thankful for. Super powerful, super easy, something you can start right now. Then we have is your social health, because remember, social health is super important. It helps you, you know, um, love does heal. <laughs> it really does. And you know, specifically, it improves your immunity, it increases IgA. And then, and what are we gonna do for that? Obviously, keep people around you that are gonna love you, lift you up, not drag you down, all of those fun stuff. Then we have is your sleep. Oh my gosh, how important is sleep? Because while we sleep, our body doesn't consume much energy, leading more energy <laughs> for our body to remove toxins, make hormones, fight infections, but if we fail to get enough rest, guess what? It's not able to complete those important tasks. And then you have now access toxins, access inflammation, and then hormonal imbalances. So therefore, improving sleep is a really important way to boost immunity and uh, mitochondrial function. Then the next piece of that puzzle, stress. Oh my gosh, stress, 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 stress. Stress is like all right, so when I literally, I was going to doctor to doctor to doctor, they're like, oh, you're just stressed. They're like, I know I'm freaking stressed, but how am I going to fix it? <laughs> no, you know, and I already tried all the sex. That didn't work, you know, but the thing is, <laughs> but it's really, really super important because we know that stress contributes significantly to inflammation and um, it sort of wears you down over time. And it messes your hormone levels, it triggers leptin and insulin resistance, it leads to high cortisol levels, leading to, you know, and more inflammation. Then we have it also like where your gut brain connection, right? Because it kills off all of those bad, good bacteria, gets replaced by more bad bacteria, um, can really negatively affect the probi the, the the micro microbiome, and even suppresses the secretory IgA, which is an immune molecule of the immune system. So again, that then you then you release adrenaline and norepinephrine into the gut, making the lining even thick to even thinner, making more permeable, leading to leaky gut and inflammation. So stress is really important. 80% of the complaints that come to primary care physicians are due to stress, and so it does a body no good. 
And what we now need to do is we have to, you know, either because in residency, all we were taught was bang your head here multiple times until you fall unconscious. And if you're still stressed, repeat the process. Like literally, that's what we have been taught in residency. So how are we supposed to <laughs> help anybody else if we have no idea how to help ourselves? So, but this is where, I mean, studies have shown the benefit of getting out in nature. You know, meditation, yoga, exercise in the benefit of, you know, helping your immune system and mitochondrial function. Then we have is your digestive health. So digestive health and detoxification. Let's do this. Yay. Like my favorite time. Who doesn't like to talk about food? <laughs> so here, we, whenever you talk about food, there's so many different philosophies out there and you can get one fight against the other fight. But again, we go back into the negative. We're all fighting about all the things that all of us have different, not the same. With all of the hundreds of diets. I'll get you on whatever you're going to say because I am a vegan carnivore. And that's a vegan carnivore. Oh, awesome. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I had to think about that for a second. No, but that's, but that's the thing. Instead of focusing on all of the pieces that we have different, we got to focus on the pieces that we have similar. And that is... We, all of you want to make sure that the food heals your gut, helps balance your insulin and your glucose and hormone levels, and is the most nutrient dense foods for you. So those are basically like, that's what we really want to accomplish with a vegan diet, with a carnivore diet, <laughs> whatever diet you choose to follow. And I'm not going to specify this diet is better for it because everybody is different, right? But we just want to make sure that the foods that you're putting in your body help heal the gut bacteria, keep them all healthy and happy balance your insulin and glucose levels and are the most nutrient dense foods for you. Because what happens when we eat? When we have 70 to 80% of our immune system is in the gut, we have all 100 trillion bacteria that are responsible for digestion, immunity, energy, gene regulation, um, you know, and also like mood and behavior, 90% of your serotonin, 50% of your dopamine. And over time, you know, if everything's working well, you have these nice tight junctions that, <laughs> that make sure that stuff stays out that needs to be staying out and makes like stuff stays in that needs to be staying in. But over time, when you have artificial foods and junk foods and chronic stresses and all these impurities and um, just the in chronic infections, so all these things can actually, you know, let things through that should not be, kill off the good bacteria, gets replaced by bad bacteria, that let things through that should not be getting through. 70 to 80% of the immune system is like, hey, I'm gonna attack you because <laughs> you're not supposed to be here. And it leaves immune complexes all over the body. So therefore, you have fibromyalgia. Or if it goes to your brain, it can cause depression, anxiety. If it goes to adrenals, it can cause more adrenal fatigue type issues. But over time, it really destroys it. And here, what we now need to do is we got to improve, like, again, get rid of the stuff that most people say, get rid of. <laughs> and that is I have them get them off artificial sugars. You know, there's a lot of sensitivities out there that a lot of people have, but again, not everybody is the same. But this is what I like to start off with my people. So is no grains, no dairy, no sugar, no processed foods, get all the chemicals out. Uh, for most people, um, replace with tons of vegetables, clean protein, healthy fats. I don't care what kind of protein you wanna choose, whatever best works for you. And, um, and then, so here we have uh, different types of healthy fats. And then we have to add like, you know, probiotics and then prebiotics, which are like your onions and your leeks and your, you know, garlic, all those and spend time in nature, getting out there, getting more like repopulating the gut. That's why I try to do it. My kids run outside, you know, <laughs> go get in the dirt. I don't care if it goes in your mouth. It's okay. It's organic. <laughs> it's just try to repopulate, right? So your gut bacteria, repairing it with different types of broths and then um, that repairing supplements, rebalancing is really important. And that is one of the key pieces. Again, just like what we talked about, the rest of the foundations of good health, the social, spiritual, mental, um, exercise, sleep, and environmental detox. So why? So that was the why the pure foods matter and what the gut health. But this is another critical piece that I feel like a lot of people do not um, yes, we're working on our gut health. We're doing all these things appropriately. But why am I still freaking tired, right? 
<laughs> or what's going on here still? And a lot of it has to do with our hormones. And specifically, one that when we say hormones doesn't really, you know, spotlight, but insulin. Because insulin helps regulate blood sugar levels. And normally what happens is that we eat, 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 eat something, it goes into our body, we, our cell needs it for energy, right? But it can't enter the cell unless it has a key. And that key is released from the pancreas, the factory, and that goes into the bloodstream, opens the door, the insulin opens the door with its key, and then the glucose comes in. And now everything is super you know, healthy, but over time, specifically with the processed foods that we're eating, you know, cornflakes raises your blood sugar level higher than sugar does. So the more processed these foods are, the, the higher they raise your blood sugar level. Now you add on top of so the processed foods that we're eating. Now add, to, add the chronic stresses. Now add on top of like, so no matter what, like you add on all of these different things and then environmental toxins that numb your insulin. So now you have way too much sugar level, sugar in your body or your glucose in your body, your cells are like, Psh, you're always there. I don't need to talk to you anymore <laughs> because it's constantly there. And so your cell and your key starts to like, I can't keep on moving this. Like it gets dull. Your cells stop listening to it. The key doesn't work. So now you're in a state called insulin resistance. And this insulin resistance can actually lead to brain fog, sugar crashes, carb cravings, acne and weight gain and um even fatigue you know where you're just like specifically when those like midday slumps you're like oh i'm so exhausted <laughs> i can't keep it i just need to take a nap and that in and of itself you know we're starting to see in kids you know where you're seeing now kids that are uh, severely fatigued and just can't move and need to take a nap every day um, older kids obviously when you're young you, get, they, you want them to take a nap <laughs> but you know what i mean as they get older but you're seeing this like with uh, kids. And on top of that, that then leads to, you know, belly weight. Now we have leptin, which is a hormone for satiation and um, leads to overeating. So then just continues on that cycle. So then the next thing is your, we have to remember that you're like, oh my gosh, you know, is this expensive? Like this is, the, you're telling me to eat real food. <laughs> is that way too expensive? We have to recognize that you know, the standard American diet, you know, we're literally eating every hour, <laughs> every couple hours. You know, we're literally told like eat six meals a day, which maybe for some, okay, but then most of us don't really need a lot of that. Depending on, you know, if you are severely adrenal fatigued, then you really got to, you know, see what you are able to tolerate and what your mitochondria and things are able to tolerate. But for mo for the most part, when you start eating more nutrient dense, you actually eat less often and you have spend less on food quantity, which is really awesome. So here, like, you know, for me, cost effective, <laughs> this is what I feed my, I have four boys. So believe me, I do not want to make, I don't want to sit in the kitchen all day long. So I want to make sure their hormones are balanced. <laughs> and so then I don't have to stay in the kitchen and they get all the nutrition that they need. And then I don't have to deal with temper tantrums. Yay, plus me. So. This is where, remember the foods that increase eating are the cheap processed foods. Well, the things that decrease eating is like, you know, the real whole foods, the real foods actually decrease the amount of eating. So actually it's more cost effective um, that way because now you have less hospital bills and you're spending a little the same on groceries. But to recap, so we need to eat to live, to, you know, nourish our mitochondria, to give, to lower our, to balance our insulin levels and, you know, to help heal our gut. And that is vegetables, clean protein, healthy fats, some fruit, making sure you're hydrated appropriately. Um, and then also, then the next main piece, and this is just the last pieces of it, is the, the toxins. Because <laughs> we are living in a world filled with toxins like literally it's like ah, I'm like one of those like scary videos everything like, you know, like, yeah it's craziness but most of these toxins are invisible <laughs> and with regular exposure toxins can slowly accumulate in the body placing a heavy burden on the liver and that's the organ that's responsible for getting rid of those toxins so 
But when it's overwhelmed and can't eliminate the toxins, now you, you know, the liver tends to store it and it's unable to do its job. And then you have decreased inflammation, um, furthering increasing it, leading to more oxidative stress. Like it messes up, you know, with the, the it messes the mitochondrial function up. Um, the toxins make your body numb to insulin and leptin, increasing insulin resistance, preventing one from losing weight, heart disease, diabetes, strokes, and can even turn our genes on and off. Like it affects our epigenetics. Like, boom, it's crazy, powerful. Um, it claims the gut leading to <laughs> inflammation and leaky gut. So this is where there's so many endocrine disruptors in the house. There's so many things like right now specifically, like, don't worry about the things you can't control because that will drive anybody crazy. So we gotta think about the things that we can control, slowly swapping out for the toxic things, for the cleaner things, or um, working on your own you know, detoxification, you know, sweating it out, right? Making sure that either saunas or you know, Epsom, in, my, you know, in my house, we do regular Epsom salt baths. Um, then we do hot and cold showers, you know, oh, different oh, things. Always in there at the same time, you get in a giant bathtub for time. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Not seriously, for my own. I'm like, I use it as an excuse for, um, for, for detoxification, which it is. But the thing is, mostly I'm like, I need some peace and quiet. Oh, and that's it. <laughs> you guys go do your three-hour Epsom salt bath. <laughs> the longer, the better. <laughs> and then like... <laughs> And then obviously, you know, making sure that we're eating to detoxify, making sure the foods that have sulfur and fiber and keep your body alkaline and you're cleaning up your home, right? Clean up what you can, like the cookware and the makeup and the filtered water. Just start slowly, one step at a time. And then there are like, you know, in a perfect world, we wouldn't need some supplements. But in um, an imperfect world, <laughs> which we're sort of living in now because the fact that you know, our nutrition is not optimally, we can't get it all through our, the soil because the soil has been deeply depleted. And so sometimes we need this just to like for a boost. And that's where cod liver oil or vitamin D, magnesium, omega-3s, probiotics, specific disease, um, specific supplements. But really sometimes, you know, sometimes they'll even need, you know, mitochondrial support which um, nutrients like B vitamins, vitamin C, E, iron, magnesium, selenium, and so much more, which are all really important in the uh, producing ATP. We can try to get a lot of those through our foods um, to really better aging and for, for to optimize, you know, to help fight those free radicals. So just like, like you know, we just get tons of antioxidants as best as possible. But sometimes um, that the things that are harder to get on food, like, Reversitrol and uh, CoQ10 that you, somebody might need. But remember, I don't really start off with all these. I really take it one step at a time with patients, really layer things in because so the foundations of good health are super important. And then you add in, like, okay, so what are the other missing pieces? Are there things of the holistic RX that are missing? And then we might need some testing, right? Just to make sure what else is going on. I really start off with some of the basic labs. And over the last 12 years of doing functional medicine, <laughs> integrative holistic functional medicine, I've noticed that most people will improve with just these simple lifestyle approaches with the, you know, getting to your labs, fixing your deficiencies, trying to figure out what your, where your individual deficiencies may be. And then if still not, then we can go in allergy testing and heavy metals and SIBO and gut and infections and methylation issues and then extra things that we can do. So there's, an, there's so much hope. And I know this is all overwhelming. You're like, what? I can't even get out the couch. You want me to do all this stuff? What are you talking about? Like, I remember I was there. I had been in your shoes. Barely could just like do my normal routine, let alone think about totally changing up my lifestyle. Yeah. If I just mention yeah. one thing. I, I, I love this paradigm, this conceptual framework that you're presenting. It's very similar to the one that, that I've built out and you're very mm -hmm. much the same style of thinker that I am. Mm -hmm. You're, you're a big picture thinker yes. and a systems thinker. Absolutely. Uh, so like how do all the different pieces fit together and where do they converge and how do they converge and so on? And where can we interrupt these, these vicious cycles? And absolutely. And, and transform the, the downward spirals of pathology into upward spirals of 
improved energy and improved health and improved cell function, improved mitochondrial function. Yes. Uh, so I, I love it. And yet I know people listening to this Absolutely. as, as <laughs> same thing that I get when I yes. present things in the same style is people are like, whoa, this is like, there's so many Too movies. Much. <laughs> Where do I begin? Right? So, so yeah, I, I know you're about to segue into this, but yeah, like I, ju I just want to speak to the fact that I know a lot of listeners are feeling that way. I get the same response when I, when I present inter information. So it's super important to just not try to do everything at once. No, that's too much. That's too overwhelming. Yeah. It's about the journey, not the destination. You mm -hmm. know, um, we want to keep that in mind, but we don't want to look at the bigger picture because sometimes that may be overwhelming for people. I mean, in my house, I look at today, I wake up and I'm like, what changes could I do today without the least steps? You know, and I, how can I optimize myself? And taking it one step at a time, one product at a time, um, just starting off with sometimes even just Starting off with gratitude, you know, I find that that's super powerful. Just like if you can't do anything, just start with gratitude. Immediately when you wake up in the morning, say 10 things that you're thankful for, you know, and then you can go to like the different types of foods and you just want to make some easy swaps, one thing at a time. For me, like I, okay, so you just, if you want to just start off with your sugar, right? Just go to maybe honey or dates or different types of things. Okay, so. I have to completely be honest. I live in a family of eight. And uh, so it's me, my children, and my in-laws. <laughs> so I'm in a traditional household, even though I was born and raised in America, but my husband's from back home. And so he, so my in-laws live with me, and guess who gets up doing mostly cooking? You know, I'm getting my boys now to take over. But so I'm doing these cooking, and now, um, Everybody shows up on my house on the weekends. So that goes from eight people to 20 people, give and take, a couple times a month. So now I completely understand you. So if I, I know what overwhelm feels like. <laughs> but this is where I had to start off with one thing. At a time. And it's that journey, not the destination. And remember, each one, like just starting with gratitude, that can already start to form some of those connections between our amygdala to the prefrontal cortex. And then the other things like sugar, like, okay, let's try it. Maybe that's too difficult. Try the different types of chips. I found that's a little bit easier. Instead of the Fritos and all those other processed chips, let's go to an easier type, which is equally delicious because now I have tried it. I do, you know, cooking demonstrations for hundreds and thousands. <laughs> so this is like, if I can do it, you guys can do it. And they're delicious. So find like a, like a sweet potato chip or a cassava flour chip or even an almond flour that are so delicious and seed flowers. There's so many different alternatives out there and that's just one easy switch you wanna make. I see you have <laughs> the, the Siete chips on there. Oh my God, they're so good. They're too good. They're like- <laughs> They're too good. That's yeah. why this is just, that's why like we do taco shells. Like literally the kids are like, yay, we get tacos today. Even <laughs> though it's like, you know, mostly vegetables, um, and um, actually I throw broccoli sprouts in there, I put cauliflower in there, I put all of these things in there. And then, and then yeah, so the, you can find, so it's not like we're missing out, we're just replacing with healthier alternatives. Mm -hmm. And um, the next, then, you know, and I, I here I've shown people like some carb substitutes. Because <laughs> if I can do two layer cakes with almond flour, you know, anybody can do it. Mm -hmm. And you can get everything that you really love. Yeah, see, I have the, <laughs> I have those taco shells over there pictured. And that's what my kids, like, when, when they come home, this is their, like, lunch. We're going to have, like, butternut squash soup, or we're going to have greens, and then we're going to have this. But all of this was super easy. You just want to make, start with one simple switch, you know? And I can make, when I can make these brownies here in the middle, these brownies, I can make 200 mini muffins for five dollars wow and it literally um i mean the muffins it takes time but you can just stick, stick it in a sheet so what i do is i like make the cake <laughs> stick it in the sheet stick it in the oven now guess what i got breakfast or dessert for the kids for the rest of the week mm -hmm. and i just cooked it like i just really mixed five ingredients together and it was super simple but if you can't do that start with the different products that are already available for you to do you know, and then so just making easy swaps that are equally delicious, like there's chocolates and, you know, everything that you want. So 
the choice is yours because you deserve better health. You deserve like exponential energy to accomplish all of the amazing things that you were meant to do. Like I can't even imagine what you would be able to accomplish if we are feeling our very best. So we got to start now. Like this is super powerful. Think about everything you have accomplished. Now like add in the energy or add in the better think clarity of the mind or lower joint pain or all of that. I can't even imagine what you'd be able to accomplish. So let's do this together. Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I love this stuff. And it's easy. Time. Cost effective. This healing is super doable. You just got to make easy swaps. You know, starting off with gratitude. Guess what? That's free. Gratitude is free, you know, um, social health, you know, social health. If you have to pay for your friends, then we got to, you know, find different friends and then, you know, stress management, meditation. There's so many apps and there's so many YouTube videos that are free that you can start now, but just find one thing that will give you the least stress because we don't want to remember stress also leads to 80% of the complaints that come to primary care physicians. <laughs> so you want to start with just one thing. And if that's just gratitude, start there, you know? If getting back to optimal health, lower inflammation, optimizing mitochondria, can are all these simple techniques that you can start today. I have lots of infographics on my website. Um, remember, talk to a practitioner that can help you tailor these specific regimens for you. Because remember, there's blood work and there's so many others. So if this doesn't work, there's so much hope with other modalities. And that's where there's so much hope. Like if those simple things, and there's homeopathy and acupressure and acupuncture and body work and energy, energy, metal, energy medicine and biofeedback, like literally it goes on and on and on. And that's what I've tried to do with my book is I really put the best of integrated holistic functional medicine all in like one source covering over 80 conditions for all ages. Because <laughs> I'm like, if I, I remember when I was exhausted, I just needed like, oh my God, where is it? What do I need to do? <laughs> so that's why I tried to put it. By the way, I mentioned at the beginning that I have it. I, I highly recommend <laughs> oh, it if you're listening. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, so, so real quick, then, I, I, yeah. Having said this is so much information and so much to take in, mm -hmm. I want you to do just a quick 30 second recap, high level, you know, summary of the key idea of how. All of these pieces of the puzzle that you mentioned tie into mitochondria and energy. And then from there, we'll just recap maybe one or two or three of the practical ta big takeaways that you want, you want people to start putting into action. Absolutely. So remember that we need to, your mitochondria already has way too much work that it needs to do. <laughs> it needs to take all and produce that energy. And we don't want anything to slow it down, you know? Um, so yes, there are, you know, aging will nat naturally slow it down. Um, but specifically the things that we can do to, to lessen the burden on the mitochondria, the better. And if we can, because remember, um, over time, that they produce less ATP. Sometimes, is specifically when you add more damage on it, they produce more, less ATP, more of the uh, the free radicals, and that contributes to more damage and more inflammation that can then snowball like everywhere <laughs> to every organ. And so, we need to make sure that we help push the mitochondria in the right direction. Just like you know, what I'm going to help you do this. But the way that we're going to do that is we're going to support it. And we're going to lower the inflammation that we can to optimize its function. Because remember things like, you know, all of these triggers that we talked about, lack of sleep, environmental pollution, you know, diets rich in refined sugar can all lead to imbalances that can then weaken the mitochondria further. So we want to think about those foods and those practices that will help to support every cell of the body, including the mitochondria. And, and then when you start doing that, it will start to lower the overall inflammatory response, giving your mitochondria time to, oh, finally I can breathe, <laughs> and helping it like kickstart back into action. And so really start, I call it the foundations of good health. 
and that is your digestive health and your detoxification, and your four S's, stress, sleep, social, and spiritual health. Because when we do that, it really empowers our bodies to take care of, um, you know, and help to build stronger mitochondria. Beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, I want to just personally, you, you mentioned the, the, the gratitude practice that you talked about. Yes. I, I think it's so easy to brush something off like that as, mm -hmm. oh, it's just a simple thing. Yeah, well, you know, what, what's that going to do? Say mm -hmm. 10 things that I'm grateful for every morning. Mm -hmm. But I, I think, you know, one of the things that's blown me away, because that years ago, that might have been how I would have reacted to somebody saying something like that. Mm -hmm. But having actually done it and committed to a simple practice like that, that you do every day, you know, in my personal life, every morning, every evening, mm -hmm. it really does start to rewire your brain after a few Absolutely. weeks. Absolutely. Where you become more positive overall, you become more resilient to stress and less easily disturbed with stress, you sleep mm -hmm. better, Especially if you if you do oh, a practice like that before before bed, it changes mm -hmm. your physiology and gets you out of stress mode. Mm -hmm. And there's this this simple little thing like that. The simple little practice starts to cascade and trickle into all of these other magical effects that that really rewire your brain, rewire your hormones and your physiology, your mitochondria in a really positive direction. And absolutely. So for people listening, you know. Don't brush off simple little practices like that. No, it's super powerful. The, the, the basis of superhuman energy of amazing health is really layering in a whole bunch of little Absolutely. practices like that so that they become your daily routine. Absolutely. And it, I mean, do it with the family. I mean, in my house, we do the grateful song every day. Yes, I know it's crazy, but it's like it really, especially from 12, 12 9, 7, and 4. <laughs> <laughs> so we do that. <laughs> we literally are like, thank you for our eyes. Thank you for our ears. Thank you for another beautiful day to change the world. Yes, I, oh, I love that. that. <laughs> I love that. That's great. I'm going to start doing that with my kids. Oh, it's so much fun. So these, I think, actually, I've done tons of videos on my kids. That's why I'm using this time right now to really empower our children and our families to be the next leaders, you know? for our yeah. future and to show that these little itty bitty things make a huge difference. And they know that as soon as they start complaining, <laughs> they're like, oh, mama, I got to up them gratitude. So yes, it's super powerful. Beautiful. Dr. Saeed, thank you so much. This has been awesome. Um, I absolutely love your energy. On a personal note, I just have to say you've brought the most beautiful energy, like just, just vibrant, smiley, happy, vitality, uh, you know, of any speaker I think I've ever interviewed. So, Oh, wow. Uh, no, uh, you should see me in person. Then. Like it's <laughs> <laughs> nice when I can see you more, more than just the, the, the shoulders know. up. I can see the full be a mind dancing. share. I don't know if you're going to be a mind share hopefully in October. I'll connect. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for, for sharing your wisdom. I've loved this. Um, I definitely want to recommend everybody get your book off Amazon and, and where do you, where can people follow your work? Uh, do you have a website or do you work with people one-on-one? -on -one? What would you like to, to let people know about? Yes. Um, one, I, um, I, am, I can be found on Holistic Mom MD. <laughs> and um, so Facebook, Instagram, and then I do have a free gift because remember, like this is, can be overwhelming for people. And that's like my free healing bundle. So like shopping lists and recipes and things like that that can, what a healing week looks like, what a healing day looks like, just help people envision this because I feel like when they can, once they can envision it, they can really become it. So I really help them that that, that's, that can be found on my website. And, um, you know, I'm, I have tons of great things coming up. I'm going to have, like, I already created like a hundred infographics that I'm going to bring, bring out this year to really simplify things. So I would really, that's a great way to connect. Beautiful. Well, thank you again for sharing your knowledge. This, this was a lot of fun. Really, really enjoyed it. Hey there, this is Ari again. Thank you so much for listening to this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, if you found it valuable, please share it with your friends, share it with your family, help me get the word out there. Also, if you're on YouTube, make sure to hit the subscribe button and hit that little bell to get notifications every time we release a new video or new episode of the podcast. 
And if you're listening to this, make sure to subscribe to this podcast on iTunes or on your favorite podcast app. Thanks so much for supporting my work at the Energy Blueprint. I hope you enjoyed this episode. I will see you in the next